So I can take my camera tool now and I can add some keyframes on this. So uh, I just need to make sure that I have my tool properties showing so that I can adjust the tool properties of my camera view. So now that I have the tool properties and my camera tool selected, I can add a keyframe at the first frame or at the beginning of the panel. I can add it at the current frame or I can add it at the end of the panel. So I probably want to have him start to walk a little bit before the camera starts tracking with him. So, you know, I might just put the keyframe at the current frame here, and then I'll put one at the last frame. And the current frame always shows up as a blue frame, or if there's any keyframes in the middle of the panel, they show up as blue. The, the end of the panel shows up as red, and the beginning of the panel shows up as green. So now I can take this and I can, um, I can move this over. Some people want to be able to move over a camera frame in a straight line and you can just click on the camera to select it and then you can hold down shift and move your arrow keys. So I'm hitting shift and then my right arrow to track this guy along with it. So now if I play through this frame I can sort of see what's happening. Do you see where the gray one is? So he's he's leaving the edge of the of the frame there. And this is a case where it's useful to see the camera preview. So now I can turn on my camera preview and I can just see, okay, he's moving in and then, and then we're moving out together. So it's tracking with it. And that would show a little bit better if I have a background. So let's just go ahead and put a background in this frame. And so I'll go back to my drawing tool and I'll just draw it from the position of the first frame, but this is useful to see both frames because now I know how big I need to make my background. So I've got my same blue here, so that's okay, so I can use that. So I'll just draw some mountains there in the background. I'll make sure to draw them long enough that um, it reaches the end of the last frame. And then maybe there's some swirly stuff down here. I don't know what this swirly stuff is. I don't know if it's grass or water or something. Now for my character that's on top, if I want to see him moving over the background a little bit easier, I probably want to white him out. So um, the easiest way to do this in my opinion is I've created a brush preset for this. Um, I created a brush preset that is just, it's like the shading brush that comes in the software by default, but it's white. And so with this one selected, I'm on my rough layer it's got the draw behind option on so I can just go in here and I can knock in some shading really quickly on this character and the reason that I want to do this is just so that it blocks him out so that you don't see the background through the character as he's walking through the scene so I'll just knock that in there and you can also make sure that all your lines are closed and then you can use your paint bucket but I just know that my lines aren't closed so that's why I like to just go in there and do it dirty and messy because this is storyboarding I don't need to do it nice and clean so now I play through this panel I see him moving and the background moving behind it so I think I should probably um, cut off for here because I've done a lot already this week we talked about camera moves um, animating the position of the character uh, we talked about brush presets a little bit um, last week I guess and um, so you know putting all of these things together is where you can start to get an animatic going. So before I just call an end to animatic building here, um, the last sort of aspect to animatics other than drawing and um, doing animations and camera moves is incorporating sound. So down here at the bottom you do have some soundtracks that you can work with and you can have as many soundtracks as you like and then you can import sound sequences into them just by right clicking on the soundtrack. So then you can browse for a sound, and I'll just bring in a dialogue track here. And I can put it on a new soundtrack or on the current one, and um, so I'll just put it on the current one. And then you do have the option to right-click on the soundtrack and show the waveform or not. So you can right-click on there, show the waveform, and you can also right-click and you can turn on sound scrubbing so that you can choose to scrub through. Now I'm just going to be quiet for a second while I scrub through. So sound scrubbing helps you to figure out, um, you know, where exactly you want to uh, cut your sound, and then you can split the sound sequence at a current frame. So you can select around where a sound sequence is, and you can split it up. And maybe I'll split this one over here as well. And then I can just delete everything that comes after it, and delete this little portion in the middle. 
And when you do split sound sequences and delete pieces, it's not a permanent delete. It's just kind of hiding that piece of the soundtrack so you can always get it back. Um, and then from here, you can just reposition the sound where you want it to be in your scene. And you can even um, create multiple soundtracks. So, you know, if you want to have a new soundtrack, you can right click at the bottom and, and have a new soundtrack. And then you could drag this one onto the other soundtrack so that if you want to have overlapping sounds, you can have as many soundtracks as you like. So some people have several dialogue tracks, um, several sound effect tracks, and uh, maybe even a little bit of music all on top of everything, and then you can get it together there. And then in order to do... Oops, let me turn that sound scrubbing back off again. So, Okay, so in order to do something like, let's say this is the end of my project, and I'd like to do a fade to black, then what I can do to do that is I can just add a new scene here, and I'll just, um, you know, create a rectangle there, so I can use my rectangle tool. And I'll just, um, you know, choose a black color there, and then I can fill this in with black. And so if I'm going to fade to black, I can have my black panel there, and then I can add a transition here. So you can click on the Add Transition button, Create Transition, and by default it creates a wipe, but you can also double-click on this to change it to a cross-dissolve. So now I have it dissolving down. And then you can select the transition, and then you can adjust how long the transition is by dragging on the end of the transition. So you can have transitions between scenes, or you can have um, transitions to, to do something like a fade to black or a fade to white. So, um, you know, once you put all that together, you've got some sound, you've got some animation on some panels, you've got a little bit of a camera move going on there, and you've got a fade to black. And um, so next week I'll show you guys an example of a, re a real project that was done by a studio. And then I'll show you how to do the export options and how that adds to the pipeline to um, give you the added value of Storyboard Pro. See you next week.